The next key figure that we want to look at uh, right now is Thomas Aquinas. As you'll see, we are um, fast forwarding almost a thousand years in history. There are obviously numbers of other important thinkers between Augustine and Aquinas. In this brief historical survey, we just don't have time to cover them. But absolutely, you need to be familiar in thinking about uh, Christian ethics with Thomas Aquinas. So what is Aquinas doing? Aquinas is writing in um, sort of the height of what we call scholasticism. So it's this effort to be really intentional and detailed and logical about how Christian truth is stated. And certainly when you read Aquinas, you can see that that's exactly what he's doing. And when we talk about the piece of um, text from Aquinas that we'll talk about in class, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. One of the key things Aquinas is doing is he's recovering Aristotle for Christian theology. Now we said um, Augustine is really interacting with Platonism and Stoicism. Why is Augustine not interacting with Aristotle? Well, as the, as the text suggests, at this point in Western history, really the texts of Aristotle are basically lost. Um, you know, you have to put yourself back in this time when you, we didn't have, they didn't have printing. Uh, they certainly didn't have anything like the internet, right? They didn't even have printing. Books were very dear, were very difficult to come by. Um, and you had to have, you know, an actual copy of some kind of manuscript. So manuscripts could actually be lost. And generally speaking, the works of Aristotle were, were lost um, to the West. Now, they had been preserved to some extent um, in the East. And um, in Islam, Aristotle in particular was kind of rediscovered and preserved. And it's really through some Islamic thinkers living and writing at around the time of Aquinas that Aristotle comes back into scholarly discussion and back into the West. So Aquinas is going to be um, playing off of Aristotle's thought. Um, you know, Aquinas was a very controversial figure in and around the time of his life and after his life. His works were even banned for a while um, because of this interaction with Aristotle. Um, now, now Aquinas is recognized by all streams of, of um, Christianity as a very key thinker and you know, the, the, the Catholic Church that at one time had banned some of his works recognizes him as sort of one of the very highest thinkers today, right? So he's very important. So a few themes that we want to draw out from Aquinas. I mentioned the Aristotelian synthesis. Consistent with that, you might notice from some of the stuff from Aristotle that we've already looked at, Aquinas is going to have a very strong emphasis on virtue. What are the virtues? What are the practices and habits that support the virtues, right? This notion that we had of, of uh, that we talked about in class last week of Plato kind of being reaching up and Aristotle kind of reaching horizontally across, we can kind of compare to some, in some ways, Augustine and Aquinas and say kind of the same thing, right? So Aquinas is trying to be very pragmatic about what the virtues are. Aquinas, um, is very concerned about the question of law. He's very concerned about the moral law and natural law, and he's also very concerned about how those themes um, work their way into positive law, into the law that, that states and legislators and, and so on might enact. And Aquinas, in fact, writes a whole treatise about law, which is really important. Aquinas, like Augustine, is very interested in political structure, although his views about political structure are going to reflect, uh, in many ways, the period in which he's writing. Um, and he's going to be very concerned about the role of the sovereign, of the king, uh, the limitations on the king, the rights of the king. And we'll talk about more of those things also when we talk about church and state.